Good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. It's a beautiful day out here by us. Beautiful day. My wife and I were able to get out once again and do some tracting today. And um, uh, they're pushing the agenda quite heavily. And um, But all in all, it has been a good day. Good day. I'll, exp I'll explain about the thumbnail here in a moment. But uh, before I do that, I have been noticing more so of late than heretofore a very big push of this anti Semitism, anti Semitic doctrine, anti Semitic um, rhetoric, and whatnot. Um, I especially when you look around on other platforms, um, there's a lot of anti-Semitism going on right at this moment. Why is that? Well, you, you got to keep some things in mind, okay? Number one, the seven-year period that is coming after we, the Church of the Living God, are redeemed, caught up, resurrected, that seven-year time period according to the scriptures, is called the time of Jacob's trouble. Who is Jacob? Israel. Who is Israel? The Hebrews. The Jews. What is a Jew? A Jew, according to scripture, is someone who holds the Judaic law, okay? Which was originally given on to the Hebrews, okay? But we'll touch more on that in another video. Okay, but a Jew is in Hebrew. According to scripture, there were some who were Gentiles who would become Jews, yes, but see that denotes that being a Jew is trans is um, correlates, excuse me, correlates onto those who keep the Old Testament law. So when our Lord Jesus Christ says salvation is of the Jews, meaning he meant the Hebrews, those who keep the law, okay? Granted, at his time, the ones that he confronted, they were only keeping the law in shoe, in facade, not in actuality, in heart, okay? But, that, like I said, that we will get to in, in another video. But there's a lot of anti-Semitism going on right now, and the reason is because the seven-year time period after the Church of the Living God is caught up is called the time of Jacob's trouble, Okay? Catholicism and all her coadjutors, such as Stephen Anderson and those likes, um, they teach what is called the post-tribulation rapture. Find me rapture in the authorized version of the scriptures. Guess what? You're right. It's not in there. Okay, But Stephen Anderson and his like uh, they preach a post-tribulation rapture, okay? He teaches that the church, the Christians, are going to be going through that seven-year time period, and more likely that it is a time of purification for the church. That's exactly what Catholicism teaches, that the seven-year time period is the Great Tribulation, the Great Tribulation. Find that for me. The definitive article, Great Tribulation. The Great Tribulation. Find it for me and put the link in the description box. It ain't there. Okay? But see, people like that, who are coadjutors working for the Vatican, okay, preaching a post-tribulation Rapture. Okay? And not to mention... <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Beg your pardon. Not to mention, Stephen Anderson hates the Jews. He denies the Holocaust. He is post-trib, denies the Holocaust, hates the Jews, hates Sodomites, 
because he himself is one, I believe. Okay? Uh, faith alone from Genesis on to Revelation. Uh, did I mention, by the way, like I said in the previous videos, that he hates the Jews? There's a lot of that going on right now. And the thumbnail to what you see is a document uh, which I'm going to link in the description box called the Secret Covenant. The Secret Covenant. And when you look uh, uh, on the PDF, when you look at it, uh, that little picture, the thumbnail, I, I took from the cover of it and kind of, you know, you'll see. <laughs> you'll see. And I kind of doctored it a little bit. But see, what that is, is Catholicism trying to put onto the Jew their own standards and their own principles. It has already been proven unto you before, people, that the Jew, the Hebrew, cannot be the ruling power today. Our Lord God, in His Word, the Scriptures, says that ain't going to happen. They are the tail, while we the Gentile are the head. We were grafted in to their tree, okay? But for the Jew to be the ruler of the world, the most powerful force on earth today, no, no. The scriptures tell us that, that that's an impossibility, okay? But see, the secret covenant, when you look at it, and we're going to go through that, the entire article of the secret covenant. Like I said, the PDF will be in the description box. Uh, of this video, okay? And like I said, the very first image that you're going to see is them trying to equate or correlate what we will be looking at here eventually onto the Jew. Trying to make the Jew look bad. And here's, here's the interesting thing about this secret covenant that we are going to look at. On this channel, I have a link onto what is known as the Secreta Monita, the secret instructions of the Jesuits. Now I'm going to put the link in the description box as well for the Secreta Monita. The link will work. It will redirect you. Just press the button or whatever to redirect you and then it will download the PDF of the Secreta Monita. And the copy of the Secreta Monita that I will be linking you is the one that is in the British Museum. The, uh, the Jesuits, the Catholics, they hate the Secreta Monita. Why is that? Number one, it is a true account of how they do things. And number two, when you read the Secreta Monita and look at what her coadjutors are doing and the Jesuit devils themselves are doing, it lines up perfectly. It lines up perfectly. And you also have to remember, okay, I've spoken on this many times before. Catholicism is replacement theology. Catholicism in itself is that spirit of Antichrist. To replace and reject. Okay? That is what Antichrist is. Okay? To replace and to reject. Catholics, they say they are Jews and they are not. They never say we're Jewish. No. But they teach. As does Stephen Anderson and the coadjutors. They teach that the church has replaced the Jew. Okay? So, with that said, before we get to that, get your authorized version of the scriptures. This is one of my other skull fields that I have. I, I like them changing it up which ones I use. Turn in your authorized version of the scriptures. Please follow me along. Don't just sit there on your duff. Get the scriptures. Turn to Ezra. Ezra chapter 4. Ezra chapter 4. We're going to read this entire chapter. Can you handle that? Now, what about Ezra? Ezra follows the book of 2 Chronicles. Ezra is the high priest, or the priest, excuse me, 
that was sent first before Nehemiah to rebuild the temple, the altar, and stuff like that. Okay? Nehemiah came back to build up the wall and whatnot. Okay? This was the return from the Babylonian captivity. Okay? So, Ezra chapter 4. Follow me along. Now when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the children of the captivity builded the temple unto the Lord God of Israel, the enemies, for our instruction in righteousness, very quickly, verse 1, you and I as the church of the living God, as ministers of reconciliation, having the word of reconciliation, when we're out there preaching unto the lost, passing out tracts, or whatever capacity the Lord has called you on to, to speak the truth unto the lost people, uh, we are building the wall. We are building for him. Not a kingdom. Okay? We're not building a kingdom here. But, we're doing the work of the Lord. Okay? We're getting the word out there. Alright? We are doing work for him. Okay? So we are working for him. What are we doing? We are building the church of the living God. Not the kingdom of heaven, but the church of the living God. Okay? That's what we are. Alright? So we're out there doing his work for our instruction and in righteousness. Okay? Then they, verse 2, then they, who's they? The adversaries of Judah and Benjamin, came to Zerubbabel and to the chief of the fathers and said unto them, Let us build with you. For we seek your God as ye do, and we do sacrifice unto him since the days of Azar Hadon, king of Asur, which brought us up hither. Now think about that, brethren. You're doing whatever it is the Lord will have you to do, in whatever capacity it is that he has called you unto. Then people from outside, who are nothing of us, have nothing to do with us. They are not of us. Let, let us help you. We seek your God like you do. Because we, we've been saved, serving him for a long time. Let us help you. Big smile. Big smile. They come on and they go to Zerubbabel and the chief fathers. Go to the heads. Okay? Like, let us help. Come on. We're on your side. <laughs> Big smile. Verse 3. But Zerubbabel and Jeshua and the rest of the chief of the fathers of Israel said unto them, Ye have nothing to do with us to build an house unto our God. You know, false brethren brought in unawares that they might spy out our liberty. Who we ought to give place, uh, not to give place, not even for an hour, to these people. Don't even entertain them. Don't even look at them. But we ourselves together will build unto the Lord God of Israel, as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, hath commanded us. So, these guys wanted to come in, who were their enemies, infiltrators, coadjutors, okay? Wanting to come in, we're your friends. We love you. We want to help you. We serve your God. We have for a long time. Come on, let us help. We see what work you're doing for the Lord. We want to help you. <laughs> and their reaction to that in verse 3, go away. No, you have, what does he say? Ye have nothing to do with us to build a house unto our God. I should have taken this advice on many occasions. My fault, my bad. Y'all learn from my mistakes. Okay? Verse 4. Now see, these people who infiltrate, were trying to infiltrate to be buddy-buddy with the Jews to help them. Okay? They like, we, hey, hey, come on. Let us help you. We love the work you're doing. We want to see it prosper. And then they were like, and then the Jews were like, uh, n no, go away. Look at their response. Verse 4. Then the people of the land 
weakened the hands of the people of Judah and troubled them in building. Troubled them. To be a burr under the saddle, a monkey in the wrench, a pain in the buttocks. That's what these devils, these coadjutors, these infiltrators do, brethren. That is their sole purpose. To take brother against brother, make them butt heads. Be aware of that. Don't forget it. Hi! Hi! Don't forget it. Okay? Verse 5. And hired counselors against them to frustrate their purpose all the days of Cyrus king of Persia even unto the reign of Darius king of Persia hired counselors oh like paid people who will go in there to pose that they are of the church of the living God with big smiles and love bombing you all to death yeah yeah, and they're just there to cause division and strife. <laughs> uh, yeah. Y'all could learn something from my dear friend from Blackpool. He's an expert at this. I, hey, you see me? I give you that. You're an expert at infiltration and deception. Especially with your words, how well you know the trivium. You're very good at what you do, you devil. <laughs> I hope you're very proud. Anyway. Verse 6. And in the reign of Ahasuerus, in the beginning of his reign, note the whispering campaign here, wrote they unto him an accusation against the inhabitants of Judah and Jerusalem. So they were denied by the Jews. They wanted to infiltrate the Jews just to cause trouble. And then when the Jews said, no, go away, they troubled them and hired people against them. Hmm. This kind of stuff wouldn't be happening today, would it? No, no, no. Let's continue. Verse 7. And in the days of Artaxerxes wrote Bilsham, Mithradath, Tabil, and the rest of their companions unto Artaxerxes, king of Persia. And the writing of the letter was written in the Syrian tongue and interpreted in the, in the Syrian tongue. Rehum the chancellor and Shimshai the scribe wrote a letter against Jerusalem to Artaxerxes, the king in this sort. Then wrote Rehum, Rehum the Chancellor and Shimshai the Scribe and the rest of their companions, the Dinites, the Arpharsathites, the Tarpilites, the Arpharsites, the Archivites, the Babylonian, the Susanite, Susanakites, the Dehavites, and the Elamites. Okay? And the rest of the nations whom the great and noble Asnapper brought over and set in the cities of Samaria and the rest that are on this side of the river and at such a time. And at such a time. Very interesting. See, if, the, if these people would have done things right away, it would have been known, but they wait for the opportune time or until they are told by their heads that rule over them. Okay? And isn't it interesting that right now, getting extraordinarily close to the resurrection, the redemption of the purchase possession, that at least I'm seeing it. What about you? Seeing a lot of more attacks against the Hebrews, the Jews. They're coming in and purposely distorting. Well, what is a Jew? You haven't defined what a Jew is. Uh, actually, I, the Lord let me do a video on that before. I'm going to link it in this one if I remember. But the, like I said, as far as the word Jew, we will be getting to that in another video at a later time. Not today. But like I said, at such a time, this close to the catching away, and anti-Semitism is really rearing its head even more so than before? Mm. Mm. 
Let's continue. This is the copy of the letter that they sent unto him, even unto Artaxerxes the king. Thy servants, the men on this side the river, and at such a time, be it known unto the king, that the Jews which came up from thee to us are come unto Jerusalem, building the rebellious and the bad city, and have set up the walls thereof, and join the foundations. Be it known now unto the king, that if this city be builded, and the walls set up again, they will, then will they not pay toil, toll, excuse me, tribute and custom, and so thou shalt endamage the revenue of the kings. Look at verse 14, how they're smooching, smooching, Okay, kissing the backside. Got a little brown on their nose. Uh, verse 14. Check that out. Now, because we have maintenance from the king's palace, for the love of money is the root of all evil, for which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. And it was not meet for us to see the king's dishonor. See, this is virtually the same thing they were doing in verse 2 onto the Jews. But now they're doing it onto the king. Because why? Their common enemy. These people's enemy are the people of God, the Jews, in this dispensation. But foreign instruction and righteousness. Get it? But see, today, these coadjutors that work for the Vatican, okay, they hate the Jews too. And like I said, I've, I've seen them. Lot of very disturbing amounts of anti Semitism. Uh, it's Shem, not Sem, by the way. Okay, that's why I'm saying Shemitism, not Semitism. It's Shem. Okay, but the level of it right now is wow. Remember, people, the Jew is the temperature gauge, if you will, for how close. We are to being redeemed, resurrected, caught up. Okay? Look what's going on in Israel right now. They are the temperature cage. And look at how, I mean, <laughs> what I've seen, the anti Semitism that's this article. Wow. Let's continue this. Rereading verse 14. Now, because we have maintenance from the king's palace. And it was not me for us to see the king's dishonor. Oh, they're, they're such good servants of their king, aren't they? Therefore have we sent and certified the king that search may be made in the book of the records of thy fathers. So shalt thou find in the book of the records and know that this city is a rebellious city and hurtful unto kings and provinces and that they have moved sedition within the same of old time for which cause was this city destroyed? Now see, they're attributing it onto it because they were a bad city. But what brought Jerusalem's destruction upon it was that the Jews rejected their king. That they would not walk in his laws. That they wanted to mingle themselves among the heathen. Read the book of Lamentations sometime really puts it in perspective for you. Verse 16. We certify the king that if this city be builded again, and the walls thereof set up, by this means thou shalt have no portion on this side the river. Then sent the king an answer unto Rechum the chancellor, and to Shimshai the scribe, and to the rest of their companions that dwell in Samaria, and unto the rest beyond the river. Peace! And at such a time. The letter which he sent unto us hath been plainly read before me. And I commanded, and search hath been made, and it is found that this city of old time hath made insurrection against kings, and that rebellion and sedition have been made therein. There have been mighty kings also over Jerusalem, which have ruled over all countries beyond the river, and toll, tribute, and custom was paid unto them. That's because at that time when they were doing that they were serving the Lord okay for example King David 
and other kings also, where they brought toll, tribute, and custom to them, especially King David. Okay? When they were doing it God's way. The other is when they weren't doing it God's way. See? Verse 21. Give ye now commandment to cause these men to cease, and that this city be not builded, until another commandment shall be given from me. Take heed now that ye fail not to do this. Why should damage grow to the hurt of the kings? And this Artaxerxes bought it hook, line, and sinker. And look at how, look at the reaction of the adversaries of uh, Judah and Benjamin. Look at it. Now when the copy of King Artaxerxes' letter was read before Rehum and Shimshai the scribe and their companions, they went up in haste to Jerusalem unto the Jews and made them cease by force and power. Boy, you can tie that into a lot of things uh, for today too, can't you? Huh? The people around today, like for example, we actually got quite a bit of uh, resistance from people about the Merhol. You know, we have one guy, we were at the Aldi, by the way, uh, doing some stuff, and the guy comes up, where's your mask? And I just looked at him, kept on going. And he, you know, he looked at, bat, he, you know, looked at me like this, you know, and I was looking at him, and he said something, my wife said he said something about potatoes or something like that, I don't know. But, um, yeah, you know, going to cause a scene. If he would have, if he would have pressed it, I would have. But thankfully, he didn't, because there was some stuff we need. But you know, the Catholic disease creators come down with their mandates, and then the people who follow them, who believe them, like go on to people in haste. It's like, hey, hey, hey! <laughs> same, same thing though. They got their letter from Artaxerxes. And they wanted, these people wanted nothing else but to stop the Jews from building the city of Jerusalem. They wanted nothing more. Stop it. They wanted to cease the work of God. They wanted the work of God to cease. Verse 24. Then ceased the work of the house of God which is at Jerusalem. So it ceased unto the second year of the reign of Darius, king of Persia. Now go to Nehemiah. Nehemiah, chapter 4. Nehemiah is one of the best books in the scriptures, uh, besides like Proverbs and stuff like that, but one of the best books that you can go to to learn about psychological operations, um, psychological manipulation and stuff like that, and the tactics therein. Uh, but we are going to be reading Nehemiah chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 9. Nehemiah 4, verses 1 on to verse 9. But it came to pass that when Sanballat heard that we builded the wall, he was raw and took great indignation and mocked the Jews which a lot of these people are doing today, trying to attribute to them. It's a Zionist conspiracy. The Jews rule the world. No, it's the Jesuits. Through Satan. Okay? Because Satan is being allowed to do so of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, for judgment upon this world. Okay? The Jews are not in control of anything. Yeah, they run the banks, some of the banks. Yes, they do. But those Jews are traitors to their people because they serve the Vatican. Okay? The Jews do not rule the world, people. Uh, scripture speaks against it. They cannot. The only way that the Jews could have any kind of power is when they are doing what their Lord told them to do by following Him. Like we already looked at in Ezra. Okay? When they were doing good, Serving the Lord, people came and gave them toll, tribute, and custom. They were the head. But when they disobeyed, they became the tail. It's impossible. Because the scripture saith that the Jews to rule the world today. It, it's, it's impossible. When our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, come back with us, His church, the church of the living God, uh, yeah, the Jews are going to be in charge. 
Guess what? Jesus Christ is a Jew. And during the kingdom of heaven, he's going to make the law honorable. Because it's going to return. Because he's going to be on the throne and you're going to be able to see him. Faith will not be necessary when you can see the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 2. And he spake before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, What do these feeble Jews? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubble, rubbish which are burned? They mock the Jews. A lot of people today are mocking the Jews. And they're taking, they're attacking the Jews and trying to call what they're doing of their own making, like we're going to see in this secret covenant. They are Catholicism, the Jesuits, want to pin everything on the Jew to make the Jew look bad. Which is kind of a conundrum for the, that man of sin, the son of perdition, because he's going to be a Jew. Because the Jews will not accept a Gentile Messiah. See, Think about that. In order for the devil's plans during the time of Jacob's trouble to take form, he has to have his man be what he hates the most. One of God's chosen people, a Jew. And hence, think about it this way too, brethren. Right now, as I have seen with my own eyes, that anti-Semitism is being ramped up. And think about it. Think about it. Get the feverish hatred of the Jew, the Hebrew. To a fever pitch, we, the Church of the Living God, who defend the Jew, the Hebrew. Uh, I don't agree with what they're doing in Israel, no, no, no. But see, that's their land. Israel, as promised through Scripture, belongs unto the Hebrews, the Jews, not to the Palestinians. And that is what we, the Church of the Living God, defend. This is a Jewish book. Uh, Jesus is a Jew. Salvation is of the Jew. You're anti-Semitic and you're, you claim to be of the Church of the Living God? Eh, doesn't work. Oh no, but rather you're a Christian, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Many Christians out there don't like the Jews at all, do they? Yeah. And you wonder why the, the Hebrews hate Christians? Catholicism has done a lot to make Christian look aberrant in their eyes. So they're going to get the hatred of the Jew ramped up to a fever pitch. And then we get redeemed, resurrected, caught up. And then comes that man of sin, the son of perdition, who's going to be a Jew himself. Rule a world leader. And at first, he's going to ingratiate himself onto the Jew because he himself will be one. And for a time, he will appease the hatred of the Jew because he's, like I said, he himself will be one. That's in Daniel 11. Go find it. Okay? I've talked about that before. But he's going to pacify it for a little while until he goes into the temple claiming to be God. And then the, a lot of the Jews are going to be like, Whoa! The, the Church of the Living God guys who read from the authorized version of the Scriptures, they were telling us the truth all along. They'll get it. And then, that anti-Semitism, that hatred, that has been building, building. You who are Hebrew, who are true Jews, whose lineage, like, mo like you of the Hebrew do, that's why uh, first and second. That's why, especially in First Chronicles, that's why that's in there. Okay, you can directly link your heritage onto First Chronicles, can't you? Okay. You thought the Nazi Holocaust was bad. What awaits you? you're an actual Hebrew, a Jew, and you're seeing this, 
please consider this one, as you know as Yeshua HaMashiach. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Please consider this. Let's continue. Verse 3. Now Tobiah the Ammonite was by him, and he said, Even that which they build, if a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone wall. Verse 4. Hear, O our God, for we are despised, and turn their reproach upon their own head, and give them for a prey in the land of captivity, and cover not their iniquity, and let not their sin be blotted out from before thee, for they have provoked thee to anger before the builders. So built we the wall, and all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof, for the people had a mind to the work. See, for us today, our instruction in righteousness, dear brethren, Church of the Living God, when these coadjutor infiltrators come in and start these whispering campaigns, trying to separate people uh, of the Church of the Living God, okay? We need to have a mind for the work. We have to remember, Satan wants to distract us. Satan wants the people distracted from what he's doing and his church, Roman Catholicism, and her army is doing. So what are they doing? They're turning the direction right on to the Jew. See, Catholicism wants the Jew to be the scapegoat. And the scriptures, dear brethren, the scriptures tell us otherwise. Let's continue. Verse seven. But it came to pass when the Sanballat that eh, but it came to pass that when Sanballat and Tobiah and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up and that the breaches began to be stopped. Then they were very wroth. See, you, you devils, you're not going to stop what's coming. Uh, you know that because you want to further what's coming. But those of us in the Church of the Living God who have been called to do what we are doing and we are doing, you're not going to stop us. You're not going to stop us. The only one who can do that is the Lord. And many of us know who do anything for the Lord that the best thing we can do to get under your skin is to continue in what the Lord has called us to do. Because there are those out there who are not doing as the Lord um, you know, who are not doing things for the Lord, maybe that they should, I don't know. But there are those out there who these devils are afraid of. That's why they attack him. Yes. Okay? There are those that our enemies are afraid of. They want nothing more than to keep certain people of the Church of the Living God down. Verse 8. And conspired all of them together to come and to fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God and set a watch against them day and night because of them. See, these people are conspiring against the Jew. Why? Because the time period that is coming is the time of Jacob's trouble. Hence, get the hatred of the Jew in fever pitch. Okay? And brethren, you have got to remember. You have got to remember. Catholicism wants to take its attention away from them. Distract, chaff, and redirect. That is one of Catholicism's greatest tactics. Chaff and redirect. They want to make you look at the Jew as if the Jew is the enemy. The Jew is not the enemy. 
They are the enemies of the gospel for our sake, but they are not the ones ruling the world. It's Catholicism. And Catholicism likes to attribute things that they have done unto others. Perfect example. I'm going to be quoting to you something from this, the Godfathers. This is uh, the third part of Alberto Rivera's testimony. I'm just going to read a real quick part in this. Just a real quick part in this. I'm going to read this whole page in its entirety. Pause that and read it. Oh, oh, pause that and read it. Get a screenshot, zoom in. All right. In 1923, Germany was in a mess. Inflation was sky high, and money was worthless. The German people were sick of war, with all its death and misery. They blamed the Kaiser for the whole thing, and had him and his government thrown out of office. The communists were fighting to take over. And another example about how the Jesuits are attributing things onto the Jew, to make the Jew look bad to the populace, okay? Communism. Communism was created by the Jesuits. But they have they have transcribed it basically onto Marx and Engel to Jews. Hence people like to say the Jews created uh, communism. No. The Jesuits created communism and placed it onto the Jew. Oh sure, Marx and Engels had something to do with it, yes, but in the Reductiones in Paraguay is where the Jesuits created communism. Okay? Don't forget that. Communism is not a Jewish creation. It's a Catholic Jesuit creation. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. Okay? Uh, how many marks does it does it cost to buy uh, buy one American dollar? About four trillion marks. This won't even buy a loaf of bread. Germany is ruined. I've lost everything. And here's a picture of them having a wheelbarrow of paper money, fiat currency. Okay, trying to buy stuff. Sooner or later, eventually, dear brethren, my American countrymen, our American dollar. It's going to be like that. Inflation. Psh. And hey, you can have untold, untold amounts of wealth, can't you? When you're printing off money back by nothing. But fictionary, uh, fictitious wealth, something like that. The Federal Reserve, which was created by the Jesuits. The Pope's Bank. Arturo so Sosa's personal bank. Okay. Um, our American currency is backed on nothing. All the gold and silver that America had is in possession of the Jesuits. And those of you who have it, um, it's going to mean nothing during the time of Jacob's trouble. Your currency is going to mean nothing, your gold and silver. Because remember, during the time of Jacob's trouble, people got to take a mark in their right hand or in their forehead, remember? Let's continue this. The new government was very weak. Beg your pardon, brother. Some men wanted the German people to run their own government like they did in France and were attempting to make Germany a republic. The Pope was outraged. The republic was doomed to failure. Two things the Vatican despises are Protestantism and democracy. Yes. Yes, because look at Catholicism. It's run by a dictator. The Pope, Arturo Sosa. Okay? The, uh, democracy and pro Protestantism. Yes, two things that uh, the Vatican hates. The Jesuits moved to stop this new 
Weimar Republic. Two men destroyed it. One was Franz von Papen, the other was Pacelli, who later became Pope Pius XII. Yes, the Weimar Republic, uh, which this picture here is representative of. Like, cost a million dollars to get a loaf of bread with their worthless fiat paper money. Here's something very interesting. You ever read Mein Kampf? Brilliant, isn't it? Whoever wrote Mein Kampf was brilliant. His depth, depth of culture was profound. The stage was being set for Germany's new Roman Catholic star. His name, Adolf Hitler. A priest was busy writing a book for Hitler called Mein Kampf. You know, and this is something that uh, I learned from, uh, uh, what's his name, um, Eric John Phelps. When you look into Hitler, he really did. He collected newspapers. He was not one that, uh, steeped in culture as whoever wrote Mein Kampf was. Mein Kampf was written by a Jesuit ascribed onto Adolf Hitler. Well, Brad, you're reading that from a comic book. I believe what Alberto Rivera said about his own order that he used to be a part of. Everything he has written about his order that he used to be a part of has come to pass perfectly. I do not believe for one second that Adolf Hitler wrote Mein Kampf. No. The writer was the Jesuit father Stamfel. This book was the master plan of the Jesuits for Hitler's takeover of Germany. So the Jesuits can write something that shows their own plans and ascribe it onto somebody else? Really? All the while saying, we're with you. We want to build, let us build with you because we seek your God like you do. Because remember, Catholics are Christians. You get what I'm saying? Let's continue this. Another great inquisit, get it, wait a second. Sorry. Another great inquisition was about to begin. Instead of wearing Dominican robes, they were wearing Nazi uniforms. And the, this new inquisition that's coming about the mall and the steel of the Jesuit poniard. What kind of uniforms are they going to be wearing? Probably military uniforms and or rather white pharmacist coats, doctor coats. Watch, buddy. Hitler's brown shirts called the Nazis. The brown shirts. Look up the brown shirts sometime uh, before they officially became the Nazis. They morphed into the Nazis, but the brown shirt shirts thing that was going on in Germany sure did resemble quite a bit what Black Lives Matter matters were uh, doing here recently in America. Funded by Soros, a Jew, a traitor to his people, who served the Vatican in World War II. Traitor. Traitor of his own people. Hitler's brown shirts called the Nazis, backed by the Vatican, used the same tactics as Mussolini, beating and bullying all opposition into submission, including Roman Catholics. Bloody street battles between Roman Catholics who were Nazis and Roman Catholics who were communists took place. The prize was Germany. Note, this political action by Roman Catholics is going on today. 
in Poland as an experiment, also in Canada, El Salvador, Chile, and has been planned for the United States. Black Lives Matter. You, on your own time, do a Google search or um, or a Ubuntu search or something like that, whatever search engine you got. If you got one of them Tor browsers, they, there you go. But uh, do a do a little look looking into the brown shirt movement before they became Nazis and compare them with Black Lives Matter. Now, so okay, Brett, Brett. Okay, so okay, so a, a Jesuit priest priest wrote Mein Kampf. And ascribed it to Hitler. Okay, but come on. First Kings. First Kings, chapter twenty-one. You you gonna like this? You gonna like this? First Kings, chapter twenty-one. Oh, you're gonna like this one. First Kings, chapter twenty-one, verses one on the verse ten. And it came to pass after these things that Naboth the Jezreelite had a vineyard which was in Jezreel, hard by the palace of Ahab, oh boy, king of Samaria. And Ahab spake unto Naboth, saying, Give me thy vineyard, that I may have it for a garden of herbs, because it is near unto my house, and I will give thee for it a better vineyard than it. Or, if it seem good to thee, I will give thee the worth of it in money. And Nebaioth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid it me that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. Now, uh, get a load of how big, brave, <laughs> leader of the country Ahab acted. Check this out. A tough guy. Wonder who wore the pants in his family. Wonder who wears the pants in the family? And who really wears the skirts? And Ahab came into his house heavy and displeased because of the word with Nebaioth, Nebaioth the Jezreelite had spoken to him. For he said, I will not give thee the inheritance of my fathers. And he la and he laid him down upon his bed and turned away his face and would eat no bread and, set, and sucked his thumb. Ahab was a kind of a sissy. He was a coward. Remember, he went into battle with Jehoshaphat and he, he, he disguised himself so that people would think that Jehoshaphat was Ahab. And then when people tried to kill Jehoshaphat, um, he cried out unto the Lord, and the Lord uh, protected Jehoshaphat. You can read that whole account, by the way, in 1 Kings chapter 22. Go ahead and read that on your own time. King Ahab was a, was a wimp. He was a wimp who was manipulated by a very domineering evil wife who is a picture, a type of the Roman Catholic Church. Who might this harlot be? But Jezebel, his wife, came to him and said unto him, Get out of here, what are you doing? Came unto him and said unto him, Beg your pardon, a bug. But Jezebel, his wife, came to him and said unto him, Why is thy spirit so sad that thou eatest no bread? And he said unto her, Because I speak unto Nebaioth, the Jezreelite, and said unto him, Give me thy vineyard for money. Or else, if it please thee, I will give thee another vineyard for, for it. And he answered me, I will not give thee my vineyard. But who? Now look at this move on Jezebel. The original feminazi. Who controlled her husband. Remember, when Jehu came in, she painted her face. Had Zimri peace when he slew his master? Jezebel was a wicked, devilish, 
manipulative woman who manipulated her husband, who feigned herself innocent. A perfect type of the Roman Catholic Church. Perfect type of the Roman Catholic Church. Forget it. And Jezebel his wife said unto him, Dost thou not govern the kingdom of Israel? Arise, eat bread, and let thine heart be merry. I will give thee the vineyard of Nebaioth, the Jezreelites. So, now pay attention to verse 8. We looked at that in the uh, Godfathers there, about how Stamfel wrote Mein Kampf and ascribed it on to Hitler. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name and sealed them with his seal and sent the letters on to the elders and to the nobles that were in his city dwelling with Nebaioth. And she wrote in the letters saying, Proclaim a fath and set Nebaioth on high among the people. And set two men, sons of Belial, before him to bear witness against him, saying, Thou didst blaspheme God the king and then carry him out and stone him that he may die. You need any more scriptural evidence about how these devils work, by the way? With their whispering campaigns? This right here, verses 8 on to verse 10, uh, Jezebel was writing in the name of the king. Oh, identity theft. Like Alberto Rivera mentioned in uh, one of his, uh, in the first one of his uh, testimonies about how a way how they can destroy someone who will not compromise, you know, isolation, um, discredit him, death by various means, was to produce a double, oh, identity theft? Someone saying that they are you and they are not? Do you all uh, remember when, uh, uh, what was that, a year or two ago when Brian Denlinger came out with that thing exposing the satanic, wicked, pagan... <coughs> Pardon? Wicked pagan satanic trinity that that blew everything up and uh, all kinds of people were going crazy. There were people out there who were pretending to be him with the same picture on the thing. Of course, when you go to the channel, you see it wasn't really Brian Denlinger. Uh, people even did that to everybody's favorite YouTube Jesuit, Edward Feniger. Okay, people even did that to him. Do you remember any of you on YouTube for, for a couple of years? You remember that? Talking about identity theft and writing in the king's name to kill someone of the Jews. So ascribing their evil plans onto others, making the Baal who was righteous ascribing unto him evil. Satan does that a lot. Through his coadjutors, through those who hate the apple of his eye, the Jew. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter 3. Second Corinthians chapter 3. Verses 1 and verse 6. Check this out. Do we begin again to commend ourselves, or need we, as some others, epistles of commendation to you, or letters of commendation from you? Ye are our epistle, written in our hearts, known and read of all men. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart. And such trust have we through Christ to God word, not that we should are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. What do you care what men think of you? Tried in the court of public opinion. 
The devils that slander myself and others who preach the scriptures, um, let them go. They're going to do what they're going to do. <laughs> you shall know them by their fruits. <laughs> yeah. 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 Walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, it is a duck. Yeah. Verse 6. Who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. The letter he's referring to is the Old Testament law. It was there to kill us, meaning break us of our self-righteousness. Because no one, no one, no one, no one could keep the law perfectly. One did. God, our Father, God manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. He kept it. He just happened to be God who can't sin. Even though the flesh was tempted. You know, brethren, the devils out there who are pushing this anti-Shemitic Shemitic, um, agenda and attacking us, the church of the living God. You know, some, some people are going to fall for it. Let them. But those who know the truth, what do we do? What? Do we need what? Do we begin again to commend ourselves? Or need we as some others epistles of commendation to you? Or letters of commendation from you? And 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Verses 1 and 2. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letters, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Letters as from us. Kind of like what we already looked at in Ezra. And if you read in Nehemiah, what uh, what happened in Nehemiah? And see, brethren, there are those out there, you know, with their whispering campaigns, writing letters to people and stuff like that. Especially, especially when you put it in context to uh, social media platforms, there is a lot of anti-Semitism out there. There are a lot of stupid people out there who are believing it. Why? Because the scriptures, they don't read. They don't believe the scriptures. Oh, they may believe a Bible. They may believe a Bible, but not the scriptures. Esther. Esther chapter 3. Esther chapter 3. Let us not forget. Let us not forget this. Esther chapter 3. Don't worry, we're, we're going to get to the article. Don't worry. Don't worry. Okay. Can't handle a little scripture? Esther chapter 3. Verses 1 and verse 6. Here's someone who really hated the Jews. After these things did King Ahasuerus promote Haman, the son of Hamagatha, Hamadatha, the Agagite, and advanced him and set his seat above all the princes that were with him. And all the king's servants that were in the king's gate bowed and reverenced Haman, who was not of Israel. For the king had so commanded concerning him. But Mordecai bowed not nor did him reverence. Then the king's servants, which were in the king's gate, said unto Mordecai, Why transgressest thou the king's commandment? So, King Ahasuerus, who I personally, according to scripture, I don't think Ahasuerus was the brightest bulb in the box, the sharpest knife in the drawer. 
That's just me, okay? But um, king gave a commandment to Haman about Haman that people were to bow and reverence him, and yet Mordecai didn't. So king commands to do something that our Lord had commanded not to do. You, you look in the Torah, the first five books of Moses, about why Mordecai didn't bow to Haman. Okay, we won't get into it in this video. Hmm, that take a while. But a ruler set up principles that go against God's word. And someone who stuck to the truth didn't bow. Hmm. You're not supposed to bother anyone who is not your, of your brethren, that kind of thing. There were many Jews in captivity that broke that. Many. Many did. Let's continue. Now it came to pass when they spake daily unto him, and he hearkened not unto them, that they told Haman to see whether Mordecai's matters would stand. For he had told them that he was a Jew. And Haman, the enemy of the Jew, he hated the Jew. Okay? And when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence, then was Haman full of wrath. And he sought scorn to lay hands on Mordecai alone. For they had shewed him the people of Mordecai. Wherefore Haman sought to destroy all the Jews that were throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus, even the people of Mordecai. And from verse 1 on to verse 6, you can liken onto a type of what that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to do. For the first three years, he's going to be a Jew, okay? He's going to be a Jew. But for the first three years, he's going to play it off nice, while going forth conquering and to conquer, devastating the world. To the point where the mark of the beast be brought in, okay? Okay? But then he's going to turn and go against the Jew. Kind of like we just see right here. When the Jew will, won't bow to Haman. When the Jew will not bow to that man of sin, the son of perdition. When he goes into the third temple and say, I'm God. See, it's a type. Do you see that? Mordecai wouldn't bow to Haman. Okay, whom the king said everyone bow to. Time of Jacob's trouble, three and a half years in, that man of sin, the son of perdition, with Satan indwelling him after he uh, comes back to life because of a wound. I'm God. The Jews are going to get it. It's like, that's, that's, that's the son of perdition. That's who they was all warning us about. That man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to go nuts and going to go and what? and thought scorn to lay hands on Mordecai alone. For they had to, uh, shewed him the people of Mordecai. Wherefore Haman sought to destroy all the Jews that were throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus, even the people of Mordecai. He's going to seek to destroy all the Jews in his petty, disgusting little kingdom during the time of Jacob's trouble. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. And we got to remember, Ezekiel chapter 25. Ezekiel chapter 25. You know, read the book of Deuteronomy. Read Deuteronomy chapter 32 and 28. Leviticus chapter 25 or 26. Okay? Read about the blessings and the curses that would come upon the nation of Israel. For disobedience and see what God will do to his own the apple of his own eye and we as the church and living God we think we're going to escape if we mess around in our sins Ezekiel chapter 25 Ezekiel chapter 25 the words of the Lord came again unto me saying son of man Set thy face against the Ammonites, and prophesy against them. And say unto the Ammonites, Ammonites, Ammon, relation related to the kindred of Lot. Okay, Lot, through his incestuous relationship with his daughters. 
the Ammonites and the Moabites. Okay? Keep that in mind. Hear the word of the Lord God. Thus saith the Lord God, because thou saidest, Aha! Against my sanctuary when it was profane, and against the land of Israel when it was desolate, and against the house of Judah when they went into captivity. We are going to be looking at Psalm 102, by the way. Uh, this, keep in mind this. Keep, keep in mind this. Behold, therefore I will deliver thee to the men of the east for a possession, and they shall set their palaces in thee, and make their dwellings in thee. They shall eat thy fruit, and they shall drink thy milk. And I will make Rabbah a stable for camels, and the Ammonites a couching place for the flocks. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. For thus saith the Lord God, Because thou hast clapped thine hands, and stamped with the feet, and rejoiced in heart with all thy despite against the land of Israel. All you people who are anti-Semitic, Stephen Anderson and all you loonies at the new IFB, all you people who hate the Jews, pay attention. Behold, therefore I will stretch out my hand upon thee, and will deliver thee for a spoil to the heathen, and I will cut thee off from the people, and I will cause thee to perish out of the countries. I will destroy thee, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Because that Moab and Seir do say, Behold, the house of Judah is like unto all the heathen. Therefore, behold, I will open the side of Moab, again, Moab, descended from Lot and the incestuous relation with his daughters, okay? Therefore, behold, I will open the sides of Moab from the cities, from his cities which are on his frontiers, the glory of the country, Beth, Jeshimoth, Balmion, and Kiriathion, unto the men of the east with the Ammonites, and will give them in possession that the Ammonites may not be remembered among the nations. And I will execute judgments upon Moab, and they shall know that I am the Lord. These are the things against the enemies of the Jew. We had to read this before, uh, before we looked at this. Because you're going to see the Catholics, the Jesuits who wrote this thing, the Secret Covenant, which is very similar onto the Secreta Monita. Um, they're attributing this, the Secret Covenant, Onto the Jew. These Jesuits are going to pay for what they have been doing to the apple of God's eye throughout history. Let's continue. Thus saith the Lord God, because that Edom, the brother of Jacob, hath dealt against the house of Judah by taking vengeance, and hath greatly offended, and revenged himself upon them. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I will also stretch out mine hand upon Edom, and will cut off man and beast from it. And I will make it desolate from Timon, and they of Dedan shall fall by the sword. And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel. And they shall do in Edom according to mine anger and according to my fury. And they shall know my vengeance, saith the Lord God. Verse 15 on to verse 17. Thus saith the Lord God, because the Philistines have dealt by revenge and have taken vengeance with a despiteful heart to destroy for the old hatred Ishmael. Isaac. Isaac and Ishmael. Okay? Ishmael and Isaac. That hatred. Okay? That hatred. That Ishmaelic hatred. And the sons of Ishmael, they can get saved, but they have to go to the God of Isaac not the God of their own making. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will stretch out mine hand upon the Philistines, and I will cut off the Carathims, and destroy the remnant of the sea coast, and I will execute great vengeance upon them with furious rebukes, and they shall know that I am the Lord when I shall lay my vengeance upon them. Micah chapter 7. Micah, not Nahum, Micah chapter 7, verses 5 
on the verse 10. Trust ye not in a friend, put ye not confidence in a guide. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. Today people are betraying each other left and right, especially because of these devil coadjutors who say they are the church of the living God and they are not. And also, these people who call themselves Christians and hate the Jews. For the son dishonoreth the father, the daughter riseth up against her mother, the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Man's enemies are the men of his own house. And when everyone betrays you, brethren, therefore I will look unto the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. Future restoration of Israel after they wake up. See, because of judgment, God is letting all this stuff happen, especially unto his people of Jew. The time of Jacob's trouble, that seven-year time period, wow. Yeah. Yeah. I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him. All of Israel is in sin. Not every Jew, not every Hebrew, but all of Israel in its, in its totality as a nation is in sin against the Lord with their Kabbalism and their Talmud and these Noahide laws. Wow! And the fact that they're going to make a covenant with that man of sin, the son of perdition, with the Vatican. They already have, to an extent. Yeah. I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him. Until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me, he will bring me forth to the light, and I shall behold his righteousness. When the Jew finally gets it, the Lord come down at the second coming with us, Church of the Living God. The Jew will be redeemed. The Hebrew, all of Israel will be redeemed. Then she, look at that, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Who is Mystery Babylon? Read Revelation chapter 17. It's Rome. Mystery Babylon the Great. It's Roman Catholicism and her army, the Jesuit uh, order. Then she that is mine enemy shall see it. And shame shall cover her which said unto me, Where is the Lord thy God? Mine eyes shall behold her. Now shall she be trodden down as the mire of the streets. Just like Jezebel. When Jehu came and she, uh, she painted her face like I said. And said to Jehu, had Zimri peace when he slew his master? And Jehu's like, there are a couple eunuchs poked their head out. And he's like, who's on my side? And he said unto the eunuchs, cast her down and cast her down. And then he took his horse and trod her underfoot. Symbolic to the destruction of Roman Catholicism. Do you see? Now, let's get. I gotta pause this so I get this thing to warm up. One second. Alrighty, back again, brethren. Now, if you like, I said you. I'll put the PDF for this, the link for this PDF here, in the description box. The very first image you're going to see, the secret covenant by a group you dare not name. You're going to see a skull and crossbones with poison and then some ugly looking teeth. And then you're going to see Hasidic Jews. And as we're going to go through this, okay, the Catholics, the Jesuits are responsible for this thing. And they are trying to ascribe it put it off onto the Jew. Okay? This, what we are about to look at, is very similar 
to the Sacrita Monita. They are trying to make the Jews look bad. The secret covenant by a group you dare not name. Emergency PDF edition. The secret covenant by a group you dare not name. Then you see another Jewish man in the center there, a picture of Baphomet and something else. The secret covenant. Now, pay attention to this. See, these people out there who are anti-Semitic want to take this and say this is the Jews. While well, scripture shows us, and I want to put the link for, uh, for it in this video, the scriptures show us that the Jews cannot, cannot be the ruling power on earth today. They can't be. It's impossible. That would go against scripture. Okay? But, as I was saying, beg your pardon for one second here, brethren. Let me, uh, let me get to, uh, let me get to where we were before. All right. The secret covenant. An illusion it will be, so large, so vast, it will escape their perception. Those who will see it will be thought of as insane. We will create separate fronts to prevent them from seeing the connection between us. That's what Jesuits do. Like I said, I'll put the link for the, uh, the PDF for the Secreta Monita. You compare these two things. Wow. We will behave as if we are not connected to keep the illusion alive. Our goal will be accomplished one drop at a time, so as to never bring suspicion upon ourselves. This will also prevent them from seeing the changes as they occur. And like I said, this kind of propaganda stuff that the Jesuit, this is Jesuit, okay, not Jewish, okay, they're attributing this unto the Jew, but if you compare this with the Secreta Monita, Lines up perfectly. This is Jesuit. This is Jesuit. This is not the Jew. Okay? We will always stand above the relative field of their experience, for we know the secrets of the absolute. We will work together always and will remain bound by blood and secrecy Death will come to he who speaks. Jesuit. It's all Jesuit. We will keep their lifespan short and their minds weak while pretending to do the opposite. He opened the false policy amongst Catholicism. Okay. We will use our knowledge of science and technology in subtle ways so they will never see what is happening. We will use soft metals, aging accelerators, and sedatives in food and water, also in the air. The Jews of today do not have this type of power. Okay? Everyone of the world, the governments of the world, are not going to Jerusalem to bow to the head rabbi. They're going all to the Vatican to bow to the white pope, the puppet for the black pope, Arturo Sosa. The world is run by Rome, not the Jew. They will be blanketed by poison everywhere they turn. <laughs> the soft metals will cause them to lose their minds. We will promise to find a cure for, from our many fronts, yet we will feed them more poison. Boy, soft metals like uh, graphene oxide in the steel of the Jesuit poniard. The 
poisons will be absorbed through their skin and mouths. They will destroy their minds and reproductive systems. From all this, their children will be born dead, and we will conceal the information. The poisons will be hidden in everything that surrounds them and what they drink, eat, breathe, and wear, like genetically modified organisms, you know, by such as companies like Dow and Monsanto's. But Dow and Monsanto's went to funk. But who's taking on their legacy? Okay? And don't forget, Dow and Monsanto's making all these uh, genetically modified organisms and the companies that have picked up their torch are the same companies that created Agent Orange. And you want to trust these people with your food? Ugh. We must be ingenuous, ingenuous, ingenuous in dispensing the poisons, for they can see far. We will teach them that the poisons are good. With fun images and musical tones. Mind control, binaural beats, flashes. This is Jesuit. This is not Jewish. This is Jesuit. This is, uh, this is like the Secreta Monita. Okay? This is written by Jesuits, not the Hebrews. Okay? They, those they look up to will help. They, we will enlist them to push our poisons. They will see our products used in film and will grow accustomed to them and will never know their true effects. Isn't it interesting if you see in commercials about certain TV programs, there are women Muslims now? Propaganda, propaganda. When they give birth, we will inject poisons into the blood of their children and convince them it's for their help. You know, the vaccines. We will start early on when their minds are young. We will target their children with what children love most. Sweet things. If I can remember, I'll, I'll, I'll put a link for the, uh, the target of the uh, Jesuit today. Today's youth. When their teeth decay, we will fill them with metals that will kill their mind and steal their future. When their ability to learn has been affected, we will create medicine that will make them sicker and create other diseases for which we will create yet more medicine. We will render them docile and weak before us with our power. The Jews don't have this type of power, people. The Jesuits. Roman Catholicism does. This is Jesuit. Okay? They will grow more depressed, slow and obese. And when they come to us for help, we will give them more poison. Look at, look at the modern doctors, the witch doctors, okay? We will focus their attention towards money and material goods so they may never connect with their inner self. We will distract them with fornication. We will distract them with fornication, external pleasures, and games. So they may never be one with the oneness of it all. Their minds will belong to us, and they will do what we say. If they refuse, we shall find ways to implement mind-altering technology into their lives. Wow. We will use fear as our weapon. Look at what the media is doing today, people. Who controls the media? The Jesuits. Look at the heads of these corporations. Look at where these heads go to college, 
You will find the Jesuit tie in virtually everything at the head, at the top of the pyramid. Okay? The Jesuits control the media, not the Jews. We will establish the, their governments and establish, and establish opposites within. We will own both sides. This is, this, this is just bold arrogancy, chutzpah, that the Jesuits have written this and are trying to pin it on the Jews. We will always hide our objective, but carry out our plan. They will perform the labor for us, and we shall prosper from their, their toil. Our families must never mix with theirs. Our blood must be pure, always, for it is the way. Catholics marrying non-Catholics. We will make them kill each other when it suits us. This is Jesuit. This is Jesuit, okay? We will keep them separated from the oneness by dogma and religion. Look at all the daughters of the whore. All of them. Name them. I rest my case. We will control all aspects of their lives and tell them what to think and how. We will guide them kindly and gently, letting them think they are guiding themselves. We will foment animosity among them through our factions. Black Lives Matter, Knights Templar, the Freemasons. Yeah. When a light shall shine among them, we shall extinguish it by ridicule or death Whichever suits us best. Ah! Is that not what the enemies of our Lord Jesus Christ are doing right now as we speak? We will make them, we will, we will make them rip each other's hearts apart and kill their own children. We will accomplish this by using hate as our ally, anger as our friend. Go around these people who are wearing the muzzles? Talk against the steel of the Jesuit poniard? They're making us hate one another. And these coadjutors, these infiltrators, so that want to sow themselves into the Church of the Living God. Just to cause division, to cause strife, to cause friction between brethren. Don't fall for it. The hate will blind them totally, and never will they see that from their conflict. We emerge as their rulers. They will be busy killing each other. And that hate is being directed toward the Jew. Excuse me. The scapegoat of the Vatican. The Jews didn't write this. The Jews are not responsible for this. This is... Jesuit. Compare. Compare this with the Secreta Monita. They will bathe in their own blood and kill their neighbors for as long as we see fit. And it's getting to that point, especially up here. We even we encountered it today. That animosity because we, we don't wear masks. <laughs> you know? We went into a place, we got into the door. And the, the one little girl was like, Sir, you're, you're supposed to wear a mask. I'm not wearing one. So, but you're supposed to. It's like, fine, we're leaving. Left. Don't give, give me back my money. <laughs> okay, here, get a refund. Let's go. We're out of here. Okay, you ain't getting my money. <laughs> it's God's money, by the way, but you know. But see, right now, they're pushing that. And these guys, these devils, the Jesuits, are trying to get you to think it's the Jew. Scripture tells us otherwise. It's impossible. The Jew is not controlling the world. It's the Jesuits. Okay? It's the Jesuits. Catholicism, Satan. Not the Jews. Okay? Okay? 
We will benefit we will benefit greatly from this, for they will not see us, for they cannot see us. We will continue to prosper from their ways and from their deaths. We shall repeat this over and over until our ultimate goal is accomplished. Yeah, there's nothing new under the sun. The swine flu way back then, in the 20s, the roaring 20s, and then the Great Depression, okay? We will continue to make them live in fear and anger through images and sounds. Vis uh, visual mind control, binaural, um, audio, mind, uh, audio control, you know? Using sight and sound for manipulation and mind control, which the Jesuits do quite well. Read the spiritual exercises sometime, okay? We will use all the tools we have to accomplish this. The tools will be provided by their labor. We will make them hate themselves and their neighbors. We will always hide the divine truth from them that we are alone that we are all one. This they must never know. They must never know that a man's color is an illusion. They must always think they must always think they are not equal, says thing, misprinter. Drop by drop, drop by drop, we shall advance our goal. We will take over their land, resources, and wealth to exercise total control over them. Uh, the Jews are not buying up uh, anybody's property. It's the Jesuits. It's Catholicism. It's Catholicism. We will deceive them into accepting laws that will steal the little freedom that they will have. We will, de we will deceive them into accepting laws that will steal the little freedom they will have. The Jews aren't doing this, people, please. It's the Jesuit. It's the Jesuit. Okay? We will establish a money system that will imprison them forever, keeping them and their children in debt. Hello, look at America. When they shall band together, we shall accuse them of crimes and present a different story to the world. For we shall own all the media. The Jesuits own the media, people. You do a search on the heads of the media. The heads. You will find, you will see ties to the Jesuits in every single one. Okay? The Jesuits control the media. The Jesuits were created by a Gentile, not a Jew. Okay? The Jews created the Jesuits. Oh, insane. Okay, when they shall ban... Okay, we already, we already read that. We will use our media to control the flow of information and their sentiment in our favor. When they shall rise up against us, we shall crush them like insects, for they are less than that. They will be helpless to do anything, for they will have no weapons. They want to disarm us here in America. We will recruit some of them to help us carry out our plans, like contact tracers. We will promise them eternal. Uh, we will promise them eternal live, but eternal life they will never have, for they are not of us. We will promise them eternal life. I think I meant to say. But eternal life they will never have, for they are not of us. Amen. I'm not of this. The recruits will be called initiates. And will be indoctrinated to believe false rites of passage to higher realms. Similar to the Masons. Members of these groups 
will think they are one of, with us, never knowing the truth. They must never learn this truth, for they will turn against us. For their work, they will be rewarded with earthly things and great titles. But never will they become immortal and join us. Never will they receive the light and travel to the stars. They will never reach, they will never reach the higher realms. For the killing of their own kind will prevent passage to that realm of enlightenment. This they will never know. The truth will be hidden in their face. So close they will be unable to focus upon it until it is too late. And that's something that I worry about for the lost people. That they'll realize all this before it's too late. Or after it's too late. When we are redeemed, caught up, you know. Oh yes, so grand will the illusion of freedom be that they will never know that they are our slaves. When all is in place, the rea reality we have created for them will be their prison. They will live in self-delusion. <laughs> wow. When our goal is accomplished, a new era of domination will begin. Their minds will be bound by their beliefs. The beliefs that we have established from time immemorial. But if they ever find out that they are our equals, we shall perish, we shall punish them, I think they meant, it says perish. We shall perish them. This they must never know. If they ever find out that together they can vanquish us, they will take action. If everybody figured out, connected the dots, crossed the I's and dotted the T's, that it was Roman Catholicism, the Jesuit order. In history, the Jesuit order was expelled from several nations before. Many nations. Why? Because of their interfering with politics. But now, especially in America, the Jesuits are so deeply ingrained in this country, in this culture, There is no hope for America, people. The only hope you has, have as an American is to get saved. That's your only hope. They must never, ever find out what we have done. For if they do, we shall have no place to run. For it will be easy to see who we are once the veil has fallen. Our actions shall have revealed who we are, and they will hunt us down, and no person shall give us shelter. Like, the, like their coadjutors, those who work for them to accomplish their goals. Once you spot them and see the tactics that they are implementing, just like others, again, you shall know them by their fruits. That is true. This is the secret covenant by which we shall live the rest of our present and future lives. For this reality shall transcend many generations and lifespans. This covenant is sealed by blood, our blood, like the blood oath of the Jesuit. We are the ones who from heaven, we are the ones who from heaven to earth came. This covenant must never ever be known to exist. It must never ever be written or spoken of for it. For if it is, the consciousness it will spawn will release the fury of the prime creator upon us and we shall be cast into the depths from whence we came and remain there until the end of infinity itself. And then, um, and then more Jesuit propaganda to try to target the Jew. And then it says here, no, it's not a coincidence. 
that literally everything marketed by publicly traded corporations in full is full of poison, none of which will kill you tomorrow, probably, but all of which combined result in negative outcomes for your health, your life expectancy, and your state of mind. We at Emergency PDF Editions suggest that you learn about such things if you do not already know. You can find the information many places on the internet. Of course it is up to you and you alone to verify this stuff, seeing as how your government can't be trusted to bring you the truth. To the best of our knowledge, the contents of this document, the secret co uh, covenant, came from this website, youarebeingpoisoned.com. I have not checked that out. I have not checked that out yet. We don't guarantee, guarantee his politics or warranty that everything he posts is the final word of these topics. But it's a good place to start and it covers most of the base and then some. You can also listen to what Alan Watt has to say. Cutting through the matrix. I've heard about that. Again, make up your own mind. But he has a lot of information. Those of you who rely upon and believe in the evening news had better just go back to your televits boxes so you won't become alarmed and, uh, or unhappy. The rest of you, please use your heads and network with your family, friends and neighbors. Maybe you can come up with a solution to, your, or to our problems. You never know. And then it says this. Yeah. And I'm sure if you were to go to this, uh, let's check this out. You are being poisoned.com. Oh, nope, that's okay. Thank you very little. Well, there you go. There you go. Yeah, the when I clicked on the link there to check that out, uh, I had to give um, go through security things. No, thank you. So that was the secret covenant. If you've ever read anything of the Secreta Monita, like I said, that's Jesuit. That's Jesuit. Now, get your authorized version of the scriptures once again and turn to Psalm 102. Psalm 102. If there is a psalm that greatly reflects the time coming for the Jew, the Hebrew. I believe it is Psalm 102. You're going to see why. Psalm 102. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and let my cry come on to thee. Hide not thy face from me in the day when I am in trouble. Incline thine ear unto me. In the day when I answer me, when I call, answer me speedily. For my days are consumed like smoke, and my bones are burned as an heart. During the Nazi, uh, uh, Nazi time, during the Holocaust, again, Read Eli Wiesel's book, Night, about the Holocaust. The Jews crying out to God. The Jews crying out to their God whom they rejected. My, bone, my heart is smitten and withered like grass, so that I forget to eat my bread. By reason of the voice of my groaning, my bones cleave to my skin. You look at how lethargic some of the poor people, some of those poor Jews were during the Holocaust. Now you might be thinking, well, okay, Brad, sure, this is talking about the Holocaust. Yes, you could tie the Holocaust into this, but the time of Jacob's trouble, when that man of sin, the son of perdition, officially goes into the temple, 
makes himself the enemy of the Jew because the Jew is not going to recognize him as God. I believe, even though you can tie parts of what has already happened into Psalm 102, the time coming, the coming Holocaust of the Jew. By reason of the voice of my groaning, my bones cleave to my skin. I am like a pelican of the wilderness. I am like an owl of the desert. I watch and am as a sparrow alone upon the housetop. Mine enemies reproach me all the day, and they that are mad against me are sworn against me. Psalm 2. Psalm 2. They that are mad against me are sworn against me. Oh, like how the Jesuits swear an oath unto the Pope? The extreme oath of the Jesuit? Which is also, uh, I also have a link for that on the channel here as well. Psalm 2. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, against his anointed, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. They shall, then shall he speak unto them, then shall he speak unto them, in his wrath, and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, when he come back at his second coming, ruling and reigning as king from Jerusalem. I will declare the decree the Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Elsewhere it says that the Lord's going to rule them with a rod of iron. Okay? This is talking about our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, obviously. Okay? Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Uh, he's going to rule them with a rod of iron. Okay? And also, dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Who is the potter? Who will be ruling from Jerusalem? Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings. Be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Son lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way, when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Psalm 31. Psalm 31. Psalm 31. Verses 11 on to 18. Think about not only the Jew in the Holocaust, but in the, of the Jew in the coming Holocaust during the time of Jacob's trouble. I was a reproach among all mine enemies, but especially among my neighbors, and a fear to mine acquaintance. They that did see me without fled from me, I am forgotten as a dead man out of mind. I am like a broken vessel. Mm. For I have heard the slander of many. Fear was on every side. While they took counsel together against me, they devised to take away my life. But I trusted in thee, O Lord. I said, Thou art my God. My times are in thy hand. Deliver me from the hand of mine enemies and from them that persecute me. 
Make thy face to shine upon thy servant. Save me for thy mercy's sake. Let me not be ashamed, O Lord, for I have called upon thee. Let the wicked be ashamed, and let them be silent in the grave. Let the lying lips be put to silence. All you liars out there, lying about me, lying about other of the brethren, trying to cause division, I hope the Lord shuts your mouth. I really do. You've already established who you really are. All of you. And for those two, but for those two who want to turn the attention of what's happening today away from Catholicism and turn it on to the Jew, You're playing with fire when you are attributing things to the Jew that the Jew could never do. The Jew is not in control of the world. It's the Jesuit. And for those of you who are lying against the apple of God's eye and promoting anti-Semitism, wow! Wow! You guys are going to pay a hefty price for what you have done. You need to be aware of that. Let the lying lips be put to silence, which speak grievous things proudly and contemptuously against the righteous. Yeah, these people who hate the Jews, who say it's the Jews who rule the world, it's the Jews, it's the Jews. No, it's the Jesuits. These people are arrogant. These people are proud. They, they uh, foam at the mouth. Their fangs come out. If you've ever seen true hatred of the Jew before, I've seen it. It's disgusting. And I've seen it from the, uh, Stephen Anderson. He's a Christian, though. Um, people call themselves Christians and hate the Jews. Jesus is a Jew. He kept the law perfectly. A Jew is someone who keeps the law. And in scripture, in context, those who were to keep the law are the Hebrews. It's the devil who, who seeks to distort what a Jew is. We'll talk more about that in another video. Psalm 69. Psalm 69. Verses 20 unto the close of the chapter. Reproach hath broken my heart, and I am full of heaviness. And I looked for some to take pity, but there was none. And for comforters, but I found none. They gave me also gall for my meat, and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. Let their table become a snare before them, and that which they should have been and that which should have been for their welfare, let it become a trap. You know how it says in James chapter four, I believe it is, How will you owe you rich men? Or it might be James four or five. Check the margin of your scripture, see if there's a link for it uh, for James chapter four or five. For that one, okay? Their table will be a snare and a trap for them during the time of Jacob's trouble. Mm. Let their table become a snare before them, and that which should have been for their welfare, let it become a trap. Let their eyes be darkened that they see not, and make their loins continually to shake. Pour out thine indignation upon them, and let thy wrathful anger take hold of them. Sounds kind of like when having their eyes darkened that they won't be able to see the truth or get saved. Doesn't that sound, kind of sound like the effect of someone taking the mark of the beast in a way? Let their habitation be desolate and let none dwell in their tents. For they persecute him whom thou hast smitten. Who has, who has been smitten? Jesus Christ. He died 
buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He was bruised for our iniquities. For they persecute him, our Lord Jesus Christ, whom thou hast smitten. And they talk of the grief of those whom thou hast wounded. Add iniquity unto their iniquity, and let them not come into thy righteousness. Let them be blotted out of the book of the living, and not be written with the righteous. But I am poor and sorrowful. Let thy salvation, O God, set me up on high. I will praise the name of God with a song. I will magnify him with thanksgiving. This also shall please the Lord better than an ox or bullock than that hath who that hath horns and hoofs. The humble shall see this and be glad, and your heart shall live that seek God. For the Lord heareth the poor and despiseth not his prisoners. Let the heaven and earth praise him, the seas and everything that moveth therein. For God will save Zion and will build the cities of Judah that they may dwell there and have it in possession. The seed also of his servants shall inherit it, and they that love his name shall dwell therein. And they that love his name shall dwell therein. Those who truly love the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? Go back to Psalm 102. Picking up at verse 9. For I have eaten ashes like bread, and mingled my drink with weeping, because of thine indignation and thy wrath, thou hast lifted me up and cast me down. Psalm 88. Psalm 88. Lord God of my salvation, I have cried day and night before thee. Let my prayer come before thee, incline thine ear unto my cry, for my soul is full of troubles, and my life draweth nigh unto the grave. Again, Psalm 102, you can liken that unto the time of the Nazis, but the future Holocaust of the Jew. Remember, that man of sin, the son of perdition, he's going to be a Jew. He's going to be a Hebrew. He's going to proclaim, proclaim to be God. And when the Jews, during the time of Jacob's trouble, realize that he is the son of perdition, that we, the church of the living God, we're telling them the truth all along. Excuse me. They're not going to accept him. He's going to turn on his own. And in that, because remember, that man of sin, the son of perdition, after we get redeemed, resurrected, Jewish hatred because of the propaganda that's being pushed right now through garbage like that, which is actually from the Jesuits, okay? The hatred of the Jew is going to be so high. But along comes this world uh, ruler who's going to be a Jew, who's going to temporarily pacify the world's hatred against the Jew until a set time. Then he's going to be the leader against them. Okay. Okay. You understand? You with me? Okay. Verse four. I am counted with them that go down into the pit. I am as a man that hath no strength, free among the dead, like the slain that lie in the grave, whom thou rememberest no more, and they are cut off from thy hand. Thou hast laid me in the lowest pit, in darkness, in the deeps. Thy wrath lieth hard upon me. And thou hast afflicted me with all thy waves. Shilah. Thou hast put away mine acquaintance far from me. Thou hast made me an abomination unto them. I am shut up, and I cannot come forth. When the Jews accept the truth that Jesus Christ is their true God, their Father, their Messiah, and not that man of sin, the son of perdition, who they're looking at during the time of Jacob's trouble. Today, if a Hebrew, a Jew, truly gets saved and be, become of the church of the living God, they're ostracized from their Jewish family because of it. I've seen that too. And truly saved, born again, converted uh, Jewish brethren of the church of the living God. I've seen it. Okay? I've seen it. 
But in verse 8, when the Jews realize during the time of Jacob's, tro Jacob's trouble, turn against that man of sin. There are going to be, unfortunately, Jews that are going to side with that man of sin, the son of perdition, because they're going to have the mark of the beast in their hand or in their forehead. And at that time, they're gone. You see. Let's continue. Mine eye mourneth by reason of affliction, Lord. I have called daily upon thee. I have stretched out my hands unto thee. Wilt thou shew wonders to the dead? Shall the dead arise and praise thee? Shilah. Shall thy loving kindness be declared in the grave? Or thy faithfulness and destruction? Shall thy wonders be known in the dark? And thy righteousness in the land of forgetfulness? But unto thee have I cried, O Lord. And in the morning shall my prayer prevent thee. Lord, why castest thou off my soul? Why hidest thou thy face from me? I am afflicted and ready to die from my youth up. While I suffer thy terrors, I am distracted. Thy terrors. The time of Jacob's trouble. God's wrath. Okay? Thy fierce wrath goeth over me. Thy terrors have cut me off. Jacob's trouble. They came round about me daily like water. And remember, in the book of Revelation, the waters that the whore, Roman Catholicism, sits upon are peoples, nations, and kindreds. They came round about me daily like water. They compassed me about together. Lover and friend hast thou put far from me. And my, my acquaintance into darkness. Why? Why though? Because these Jews, during the time of Jacob's trouble, figure it out. And they are going to be the hunted like never before seen. That time during the time of Jacob's trouble, when that man of sin, the son of perdition, especially at that time when he goes in to declare himself God, who will have Satan indwelt in him, son of perdition, the Sop, okay? When he goes ballistic on the Jew, it's going to make the Nazi Holocaust look like nothing. Back to Psalm 102. Picking up at verse 11. My days are like a shadow that declineth, and I am withered like grass. So from verses 1 on to verse 11, you see the Jew, Israel, crying out. From what? Mine enemies reproach me all the day, and they that are mad against me are sworn against me. You read Revelation chapter 2, verse 9, verse 3, uh, chapter 3, verse 9 where it talks about they who say they are Jews and are not, and are of the synagogue of Satan. See, people out here who don't want to believe the truth, and these coadjutors who want to point the uh, finger at the Jew rather to take it away from the Vatican, okay, these people will say, well, synagogue of Satan, syna it's the Jews, it's the Jews. No. Catholics teach replacement theology. They are saying they are Jews the apple of God's eye. Even though Catholics do not say we are Jews, but they teach replacement theology. Hence, that they are now the apple of God's eye. Stephen Anderson, he teaches replacement theology. Okay? He is saying he is a Jew. Okay? And synagogue of Satan? The church buildings? Hello? Hello? Okay? So these enemies are sworn against them. Catholicism is sworn against the Jew. Against the Hebrew. They're sworn against us. The church of the living God. Well, see, once we're out of here, who are they going to go after? They're going to go after first the sons of Isaac, uh, the sons of Ishmael, excuse me, the Muslim. Then once they've been taken care of, they're going to go after the Jew, the Hebrew. Verse 12 in Psalm 102. 
Here's the positive. When the Jew figures it out, but thou, O Lord, shalt endure forever, and thy remembrance unto all generations. Alleluia. Alleluia. Psalm 9. Psalm 9. I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will shoot forth all thy marvelous works. When the Jew gets it during the time of Jacob's trouble, when the Jew, the Hebrew, finally gets it, and they repent as a nation, because they see that man of sin, the son of perdition, and they'll remember what we had told them. They'll go to the New Testament, to the book of Hebrews and James. They'll learn of him, finally. I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart, I will shoot forth all thy marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in thee. I will sing praise to thy name, O thou most high. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. When mine enemies are turned back, they shall fall and perish at thy presence. When you come back at his second coming, see? For thou hast maintained my right and my cause. Thou saddest in the throne, judging right. Future prophecy, when our Lord Jesus Christ sits upon his throne, ruling and reigning from Jerusalem, judging right. Thou hast rebuked the heathen, thou hast destroyed the wicked, thou hast put out their name forever and ever. O thou enemy, I, destructions are come to a perpetual end, and thou hast destroyed cities, their memorial is perished with them. But the Lord shall endure forever. He hath prepared his throne for judgment. Judgment. I would tell you the greatest of the attributes of God is his judgment. Some would say his grace and mercy, but that grace and mercy is derived from him first being judge. And he shall judge the world in righteousness. And his second coming, the kingdom of heaven. He shall minister judgment to the people in uprightness. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee, for thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. Sing praises to the Lord, which dwelleth in Zion. Declare among the people his doings. When he maketh inquisition for blood, he remembereth them. He forgetteth not the cry of the humble. Was not the first 11 verses in Psalm 102 of one of humility? Finally. Have mercy upon me, O Lord. Consider my trouble which I suffer of them that hate me. Thou that liftest me up from the gates of death, that I may shew forth all thy praise. In the gates of the daughter of Zion, I will rejoice in thy salvation. The heathen are sunk down in the pit that they have made. In the net which, which they hid is their own foot taken. The Lord is known by the judgment which he executed. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. Higieon Shelah. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. <laughs> Keep it up there, buddy. <laughs> Go on. Yeah. The wicked shall be turned into hell. And all the nations that forget God. America. For the needy shall not always be forgotten. The expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. Arise, O Lord. Let not man prevail. Let the heathen be judged in thy sight. Put them in fear, O Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but men. Shalom. Oh, and Psalm 73. Psalm
Psalm 73. Verses 16. On to the close of the chapter. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I their end. Surely thou didst set them in slippery places. Thou castest them down into destruction. How are they brought into desolation? As in a moment, they are utterly consumed with terrors. You know what's funny? To see how the enemies of our Lord are so afraid of those who speak the truth. And that's something. But also, in context to what we are speaking, when the Jews come to the realization, until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I their end. Verse 20. As a dream when one awaketh, so, O Lord, when thou awakest, thou shalt despise their image. Thus my heart was grieved, and I was pricked in my reins. So foolish was I, and ignorant. I was as a beast before thee. The Jews are going to be at that time. I was foolish. I was ignorant. I was as a beast before thee. How could I have been so blind all these centuries of you, Lord Jesus Christ? If the diminishing of them be the riches of the Gentiles, what will be the fulfillment of of them, other than life from the dead? I just paradise that from Romans chapter 11, just so you know. Because they are the enemies of the gospel, for our sake, the Gentile, to graft us, the Gentile, into their tree to make them jealous. What's going to happen once they uh, are zealous for the Lord? <laughs> Have you ever witnessed unto the Jews before? Have you ever witnessed unto a Hasidic rabbi before? Unto the Hasidim in Chicago? Huh? If the Jews had that zeal that they have for their, for their Kabbalah, for their Talmud, if they had that zeal for the Lord Jesus Christ, wow, man, wow. You know, you know these Jesuits who will go down on a sinking ship just because their provincial said so? Hmm. A Jew who is of the church of the living God, whose jealousy is right, meaning, you know, that's my God. And you see his that jealousy when you know it's like, you know, you Gentiles, you Gentiles. It's like uh, Mark. Yeah, I'm a Gentile, but remember. I've been, we're, we're in Christ. I know, I know, you don't have to remind me. It's like, I know, I get it. See, if you've never met or talked to an actually saved, born-again, converted Jew of the church of the living God, where you see that jealousy, you know, it's like you Gentiles. And it's like, hey, is the one I'm talking about, his name was Mark, a New York Jew, <laughs> a converted New York Jew. Okay, <laughs> beautiful men, beautiful men. I'll, I'll never forget them. But um, someone who is actually converted of the Jew, that that zeal that they ha that the Jew has for what is not of their God, but to have it for that which is their God. Wow, that's something. And at the time of the during the time of Jacob's trouble, at that time when that man of sin, son of perdition, goes up, it's like, here I am, wow. And the Jews, that zeal for their Lord, is like, we've been so foolish. There ain't going to be no stopping them. <laughs> That's why Satan is going to be so horrific in making the, the crimes of the Eustachi even look like nothing. 
But see, Israel at that time will be accepting their God. Not all of Israel, not all the Jews, but there will be Jews that will accept the truth of Jesus Christ, their Messiah. And that zeal. Like I said, if you've never had the chance to speak with and have fellowship with a saved, born-again, converted Jew who is a new creature in Christ Jesus, to see Romans 11 come to your eyes, you know, with jealousy, <laughs> you might be saying, Brad, that sounds kind of... No, no, no. See, that's the way the Jew is supposed to be for their God. And when you get the privilege to see it, you'll never forget it. Verse 23. Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Thou hast holden me by my, by my right hand. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel. And afterward, afterward, receive me to glory. After the time of Jacob's trouble, receive the Jew unto glory. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Again, think, think about, you know, put this into the equation, the Psalm of Asaph. When the Jew, in the time of Jacob's trouble, finally come to believe on their God, their Savior, their King, our Lord Jesus Christ. When, when a Jew is converted today, made of the church of the living God, by the grace of God, through faith. Wow, man. For lo, they that are far from thee shall perish. Thou hast destroyed all them that go a horn from thee. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. Amen. 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 Did we read to uh, did we read to verse 28, brethren? <laughs> I'm sorry. Did we? Yes, we did. Okay. Psalm 102 again. Verse 13. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion, for the time to favor her, yea, the set time is come. For thy servants take pleasure in her stones and favor the dust thereof. So the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord and all the kings of the earth thy glory. When the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall appear, second coming, in his glory. He will regard the prayer of the destitute and not despise their prayer. This shall be written for the generation to come. And the people which shall be created shall praise the Lord. Be created. Those that will accept the Lord Jesus Christ during that time. Okay? For he hath looked down from the height of his sanctuary. From heaven did the Lord behold the earth. To hear the groaning of the prisoner. To lose those that are appointed to death. Think about in the Exodus. How he heard the groanings of the children of Israel. During the time of Jacob's trouble. When they finally come to him. To declare the name of the Lord in Zion. And his praise. And his praise in Jerusalem. When the people are gathered together in the kingdoms to serve the Lord, he weakened my strength in the way. He shortened my days. Unless he shortened the days, no flesh would be saved. Mm. I said, O oh my God, take me not away in the midst of my days. Thy years are throughout all generations. Of old hast thou laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thy hands. They shall perish. But thou shalt endure. Yea, all of them shall wax old like a garment. As a vesture shalt thou change them, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall have no end. 
the children of thy servants shall continue, and their seed shall be established before thee. So from verses 1 on to verse 11, the Jew crying out during the time of Jacob's trouble. Verses 12 to the close of the chapter, Amos. Amos chapter 9. You ever run into these people who say, who want to dispute about what the ultimate end uh, is of the time of Jacob's trouble? Uh, take them to Amos chapter 9. There are many other places to go. Amos chapter 9. Amos chapter 9, verses 8 to verse 15. We're almost done. Behold, the eyes of the Lord God are upon the sinful kingdom. And I will destroy it from off the face of the earth, saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, saith the Lord. The sinful kingdom. Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? I'll give you 50 guesses who that sinful kingdom is. Verse 49 don't come. I'll give you a hint. It's Rome! For lo, I will command. And I will sift the house of Israel among all nations, like as corn is sifted in a sieve. Yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say the evil shall not overtake nor prevent, prevent us. The sinners of my people, those of the Jew who unfortunately take the mark of the beast in their right hand or in their forehead. Okay? In that day will I in that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen, and close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins, and will build it as in the days of old. Has that happened yet? No. Future prophecy of the Davidic kingdom. Meaning as king. David himself no. Jesus Christ, God our Father. The seed of David, meaning the king of the Jews, not the king of the Catholic Church. Satan is the king of the Catholic Church. Okay? That they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the heathen which are called by my name, saith the Lord, that doeth this. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper, and the treader of grapes him that soweth seed, and the mountain shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. Verse 13 tells us that the kingdom of heaven is going to be farming, agriculture, natural. Because today here, especially in America, with the genetically modified organisms, and fake food, poisonous toxic food, like the Jesuits, just told us in the secret covenant that they are trying to ascribe unto the Jew? Blasphemy? Okay? <laughs> no. It's going to be all organic during the kingdom of heaven, people. Can't wait. And I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel, and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof. They shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them. Kingdom of Heaven is going to be farming, okay? Gardening, that kind of stuff. Natural, going back to the old way. Not with genetically modified garbage or machines. From dust we came, on the dust we'll go back. No farming. And I will plant them upon their land. And they shall no more be pulled up out of their land which I have given them, saith the Lord God. Amen. Amen. Now, Zechariah chapter 3. Zechariah chapter 3. Verses 8 on the verse 10. Hear now, O Joshua, the high priest, Thou and thy fellows that sit before thee. For they are men wondered at. For behold, 
I will bring forth my servant, the all capital letters, branch. I am the vine. Ye are the branches. He came unto his own, the Jews. His own received him not. For behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua, this is the headstone of the corner, uh, this is the Lord's doing, and it was marvelous in his eyes. No other foundation can any man lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. He is the headstone of the corner, not the little small rock, little small stone, uh, Peter, no, but the rock. Okay. Upon one stone shall be seven eyes, the seven churches, the seven spirits, of the seven churches. Behold, I will engrave the engraving thereof, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. In that day, saith the Lord of hosts, shall ye call every man his neighbor under the vine, our Lord Jesus Christ, and under the fig tree, Israel. Look at that again. In that day, saith the Lord of hosts, ye shall call every man his neighbor under the vine, our Lord Jesus Christ, and under the fig tree, under Israel. You're supposed to, during the time of Jacob's trouble, all nations have got to, got to go to Israel to Jerusalem, to the Feast of Tabernacles, to worship our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. If you don't do that during the time of Jay, uh, excuse me, during the time of the Kingdom of Heaven, if you don't do that, you ain't going to get any rain on your land. And during the Kingdom of Heaven, throughout the entire world, it's going to be farming, no genetic, nothing, all natural, because the ground is going to be re, uh, be uh, healed, cured, everything. By God Himself ruling and reigning for a thousand years. But see, everyone's going to be uh, in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, ye shall call every man his neighbor under the vine, under our Lord Jesus Christ, and under the fig tree, Israel. And Zechariah chapter 6, verses 9, unto the close of the chapter. Then we'll be done. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Take of them of the captivity, even of Heldai and Tobijah and Jediah, which are come from Babylon, and come thou the same day, and go into the house of Josiah the son of Sephaniah. Then take silver and gold, and make crowns, and set them upon the head of Joshua the son of Josedek the high priest, and speak unto him, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Behold, the man whose name is the branch, talking about our Lord Jesus Christ, and he shall grow up out of his place, being a Jew, he sprang from Judah, okay? And he shall build the temple of the Lord. Even he shall build the temple of the Lord, and he shall bear the glory, and shall sit and rule upon his throne. And he shall be a priest upon his throne, and the council of peace shall be between them both. Now, build the temple. Uh, in the book of Revelation, there will be a third temple built. And, and the second coming, uh, the new heaven and the new earth, specifically say, and that's in Revelation 20, uh, between 20 and 22, me and a brother, uh, me and brother Bobby, we spake about this over the phone a little while ago. But... Um, there is no mention in Scripture of a fourth temple. First, second, and third temple. So when he builds the temple of the Lord, uh, remember, during the kingdom of heaven, the law is going to be back. Okay? Okay? The perfect sacrifice for sins was already made. But, remember, the Sermon on the Mount, which is all works, Offering, lay your offering at your brother's feet, okay? Or lay your offering at the altar and then go make sure your friend or whatever. Um, during the kingdom of heaven, it's all works. Why? Because the law is reestablished. 
the law is going to be there again. So when it says that he's building his temple, meaning that he is, that the law is reinstituted, okay? The law is coming back, especially for the time of the kingdom of heaven. It's all works in the kingdom of heaven. Faith is... <laughs> ah. You don't need faith when you can see it. You don't need faith to believe on Jesus Christ when you can see him on the throne at Jerusalem. People. Okay? Have you read Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 and verse 6? Okay? The kingdom of heaven is nothing but works. The law is going to be reestablished. Okay? That's what that means. Okay? Instruction in righteousness? Build his temple? Yes, that's there. Because today in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, when you are saved, born again, converted, the Lord seals you with the Holy Ghost. And the Lord is that spirit. You know, our God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? And that circumcision made without hands is the Lord within you. And your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. You know, your body is the temple of God. Yes. Instruction and in righteousness. Yes. But... During the kingdom of heaven, the law is going to be there reestablished again. Okay? The king's going to be there. And read the Sermon on the Mount, which is for the kingdom of heaven. Lines up perfectly. Let's continue and finish this. 14. And the crown shall be to Helam and Tobijah and Jediah and to Hen the son of Sephaniah for a memorial in the temple of the Lord. And they that are far off shall come and build in the temple of the Lord. And ye shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. And this shall come to pass, if ye will diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God. And right there. Diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God. History shows us that the Jew has... Well, you read the book of Judges. Okay? <laughs> read the book of Judges. Read the books of uh, First, Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles. The perfect obedience of the Jew will come towards the end of the time of Jacob's trouble and then the kingdom of heaven. God is hardly done with the Jew. The Jew is the apple of God's eye. And it is the Jew that will be exalted in the end. Okay? And this article, the um, Secret Covenant, that wasn't written by Jews. I believe we've already proved that Catholicism, the enemy, will write things to ascribe them onto others to take the blame for them. Thus, the secret covenant. And you'll see, you'll see, especially with the thumbnail that I'm going to put on here. Um, you'll see. Again, it's the Jesuits that rule the world, not the Jew. And you've got to remember, with these, what we've looked at, especially Psalm 102, those of you who are anti-Semitic, who hate the Jew, The fulfillment and restoration of the Jew is undeniable and will happen. And you know what? That isn't you and I as Gentiles. Don't forget that. God is not done with his people. Those of you who are spreading all this anti-Semitic hatred, you are in trouble with the Lord. God have mercy on you. It's going to be it for that, this video, brethren. Uh, got some other videos coming this week, Lord willing. A uh, 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 beloved brother of mine, through a text message, made a comment 
which the Lord really is like, ooh, Brad, I want you to do It's like, thank you. Uh, that's going to be coming. And also, uh, another video will be coming, Lord willing, about the Jew again. Um, because like I said, with the anti-Semitic hatred that I have seen online lately, um, stage is being set. And seeing more animosity and hatred against the Jew. Wow. Our time is ending. Theirs is just getting started. That's going to be it for this video. Uh, we love you. Thank you to all of you of the Church of the Living God for your prayers. Uh, we pray for so many of you. Um, so many of you. And we love you and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please continue to pray for us. Uh, the more that the more the Lord wants us to do, the more subtle the attacks of the devil come. And, um, wow, the devil is uh, really ramping it up. Pray for us. And pray for each other. Pray for your brethren in Australia. Pray for the babes in Christ Jesus. Pray that the babes be protected from wolves in sheep's clothing. Who are so f as fake as a $3 bill. And beware of this anti-Semitism. Uh, anti-Semitism is satanic. So, it's going to be it. I'm going to upload this video. Thank you so much for watching this if you do. I love you. We'll see you in the next video.